a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Robert the Bruce Robert I, popularly known as Robert the Bruce, was King of Scots from 1306 until his death in 1329. Robert was one of the most famous warriors of his generation, and eventually led Scotland during the First War of Scottish Independence against England. He fought successfully during his reign to regain Scotland's place as an independent country, and is today revered in Scotland as a national hero. Descended from the Anglo-Norman and Gaelic nobility, his paternal fourth great-grandfather was King David I. Robert's grandfather, Robert de Bruce, 5th Lord of Annandale. Was one of the claimants to the Scottish throne during the Great Cause. As Earl of Carrick, Robert the Bruce supported his family's claim to the Scottish throne and took part in William Wallace's revolt against Edward I of England. Appointed in 1298 as a guardian of Scotland alongside his chief rival for the throne, John III Comyn, Lord of Badenoch, and William Lamberton, Bishop of St Andrews, Robert later resigned in 1300 due to his quarrels with Comyn and the apparently imminent restoration of John Balliol to the Scottish throne. After submitting to Edward I in 1302, and returning to the King's Peace, Robert inherited his family's claim to the Scottish throne upon his father's death. In February 1306, Bruce having wounded Comyn, rushed from the church where they met, and encountered his attendants outside. Bruce told them what had happened and said, I must be off, for I doubt I have slain the Red Comyn, too, doubt? Roger de Kirkpatrick of Closeburn answered, I Max Seger, and rushing into the church, killed Comyn. For this Bruce was then excommunicated by the Pope. Bruce moved quickly to seize the throne and was crowned King of Scots on 25 March 1306. Edward's forces defeated Robert in battle, forcing him to flee into hiding before re-emerging in 1307 to defeat an English army at Loudon Hill and wage a highly successful guerrilla war against the English. Bruce defeated his other Scots enemies, destroying their strongholds and devastating their lands and in 1309 held his first parliament. A series of military victories between 1310 and 1314 won him control of much of Scotland, and at the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314, Robert defeated a much larger English army under Edward II of England, confirming the re-establishment of an independent Scottish kingdom. The battle marked a significant turning point, with Robert's armies now free to launch devastating raids throughout northern England, while also extending his war against the English to Ireland by sending an army to invade there and by appealing to the Irish to rise against Edward II's rule. Despite Bannockburn and the capture of the final English stronghold at Berwick in 1318, Edward II refused to renounce his claim to the overlordship of Scotland. In 1320, the Scottish nobility submitted the Declaration of Arbroath to Pope John XXII, declaring Robert as their rightful monarch and asserting Scotland's status as an independent kingdom. In 1324, the Pope recognised Robert I as King of an independent Scotland, and in 1326, the Franco-Scottish alliance was renewed in the Treaty of Corbeil. In 1327, the English deposed Edward II in favour of his son, Edward III and peace was concluded between Scotland and England with the Treaty of Edinburgh Northampton, by which Edward III renounced all claims to sovereignty over Scotland. Robert died in June 1329. His body is buried in Dunfermline Abbey, while his heart was interred in Melrose Abbey and his internal organs embalmed and placed in St. Serf's Chapel, Dumbarton, site of the medieval Cardross Parish Church, third cousin and associate of Roger de Kirkpatrick. Roger is also first cousin to William Wallace. Background Robert de Bruce, 1st Lord of Annandale, the first of the Bruce, or de Bruce, line arrived in Scotland with David I in 1124 and was given the lands of Annandale in Dumfries and Galloway. Several members of the Bruce family were called Robert. The future king was one of ten children, and the eldest son, of Robert de Bruce, 6th Lord of Annandale, and Marjorie. Countess of Carrick, 
and claimed the Scottish throne as a fourth great-grandson of David I. His mother was by all accounts a formidable woman who, legend would have it, kept Robert Bruce's father captive until he agreed to marry her. From his mother, he inherited the earldom of Carrick, and through his father, a royal lineage that would give him a claim to the Scottish throne. The Bruces also held substantial estates in Aberdeenshire, County Antrim, County Durham, Essex, Middlesex, and Yorkshire. Birth Although Robert the Bruce's date of birth is known, his place of birth is less certain, although it is most likely to have been Turnbury Castle in Ayrshire, the head of his mother's earldom. However there are claims that he may have been born in Lochmaben in Dumfriesshire, or Ritalin in Essex. Childhood Very little is known of his youth. He was probably brought up in a mixture of the Anglo-Norman culture of Northern England and Southeastern Scotland, and the Gaelic culture of Southwest Scotland, and most of Scotland north of the River Forth. Annandale was thoroughly feudalized and the form of Northern Middle English that would later develop into the Scots language was spoken throughout the region. Carrick was historically an integral part of Galloway, and though the Earls of Carrick had achieved some feudalization, the society of Carrick at the end of the 13th century remained emphatically Celtic and Gaelic-speaking. Robert the Bruce would most probably have become trilingual at an early age. He would have been schooled to speak read and possibly write in the Anglo-Norman language of his Scots-Norman peers, and his father's family. He would also have spoken both the Gaelic language of his Carrick birthplace and his mother's family, and the early Scots language. As the heir to a considerable estate and a pious layman, Robert would also have been given working knowledge of Latin, the language of charter lordship, liturgy and prayer. This would have afforded Robert and his brothers access to basic education in the law, politics, scripture. Saints' lives, philosophy, history and chivalry construction and romance. That Robert took personal pleasure in such learning and leisure is suggested in a number of ways. Barber reported that Robert read aloud to his band of supporters in 1306, reciting from memory tales from a 12th century romance of Charlemagne, Fire Arbors, as well as relating examples from history such as Hannibal's defiance of Rome. As king, Robert certainly commissioned verse to commemorate Bannockburn and his subjects' military deeds. Contemporary chroniclers Jean LaBelle and Thomas Gray would both assert that they had read a history of his reign commissioned by King Robert himself. In his last years, Robert would pay for Dominican friars to tutor his son, David, for whom he would also purchase books. A parliamentary briefing document of circa 1364 would also assert that Robert used continually to read, or have read in his presence, the histories of ancient kings and princes, and how they conducted themselves in their times, both in wartime and in peacetime. From these he derived information about aspects of his own rule. Tutors for the young Robert and his brothers were most likely drawn from unbeneficed clergy or mendicant friars associated with the churches patronized by their family. However, as growing noble youths, outdoor pursuits, and great events would also have held a strong fascination for Robert and his brothers. They would have had masters drawn from their parents' household to school them in the arts of horsemanship, swordsmanship, the joust, hunting and perhaps aspects of courtly behavior, including dress, protocol, speech, table etiquette, music and dance, some of which may have been learned before the age of ten while serving as pages in their father's or grandfather's household. As many of these personal and leadership skills were bound up within a code of chivalry, Robert's chief tutor was surely a reputable, experienced knight, drawn from his grandfather's crusade retinue. This grandfather, known to contemporaries as Robert the Noble, and to history as Bruce the Competitor, seems to have been an immense influence on the future king. Robert's later performance in war certainly underlines his skills in tactics and single combat. The family would have moved between the castles of their lordships, Lochmaben Castle, the main castle of the lordship of Annandale, and Turnbury and Lochdoon Castle, the castles of the earldom of Carrick. A significant and profound part of the childhood experience of Robert, Edward, and possibly the other Bruce brothers, was also gained through the Gaelic tradition of being fostered to ally Gaelic kindreds, a traditional practice in Carrick, southwest and western Scotland, the Hebrides and Ireland. There were a number of Carrick, 
Ayrshire, Hebridean and Irish families and kindreds affiliated with the Bruces who might have performed such a service. This Gaelic influence has been cited as a possible explanation for Robert the Bruce's apparent affinity for hobella warfare, using smaller sturdy ponies and mounted raids, as well as for sea power, ranging from Ordwar galleys to boats. According to historians such as Barrow and Penman, it is also likely that when Robert and Edward Bruce reached the male age of consent of twelve, and began training for full knighthood, they were sent to reside for a period with one or more allied English noble families, such as the de Clares of Gloucester, or perhaps even in the English royal household. Sir Thomas Gray asserted in his Scala Chronica that in about 1292, Robert the Bruce, then aged 18, was a young bachelor of King Edward's chamber. While there remains little firm evidence of Robert's presence at Edward's court, on the 8th of April 1296 both Robert and his father were pursued through the English Chancery for their private household debts of £60 by several merchants of Winchester. This raises the possibility that young Robert the Bruce was on occasion resident in a royal centre which Edward I himself would visit frequently during his reign. Robert's first appearance in history is on a witness list of a charter issued by Alexander Rob MacDonald, Lord of Isla. His name appears in the company of the Bishop of Argyll, the Vicar of Arran, a Gantire clerk, his father, and a host of Gaelic notaries from Carrick. Robert Bruce, the king-to-be, was 16 years of age when Margaret, maid of Norway died in 1290. It is also around this time that Robert would have been knighted and he began to appear on the political stage in the Bruce dynastic interest. The Great Cause Robert's mother died early in 1292. In November of the same year, Edward I of England, on behalf of the Guardians of Scotland and following the Great Cause, awarded the vacant crown of Scotland to his grandfather's first cousin once removed, John Balliol. Almost immediately, Robert de Bruce, 5th Lord of Annandale, resigned his Lordship of Annandale and transferred his claim to the Scottish throne to his son, anti-dating this statement to the 7th of November. In turn, that son, Robert de Bruce, 6th Lord of Annandale, resigned his earldom of character his eldest son, Robert, the future king, so as to protect the Bruce's kingship claim while their middle lord now held only English lands. While the Bruce's bid for the throne had ended in failure, the Balliol's triumph propelled the 18-year-old Robert the Bruce onto the political stage in his own right. The Bruce's regroup Even after John's accession, Edward still continued to assert his authority over Scotland and relations between the two kings soon began to deteriorate. The Bruce's sided with King Edward against King John and his Comyn allies. Robert the Bruce and his father both considered John a usurper. Against the objections of the Scots, Edward I agreed to hear appeals on cases ruled on by the court of the guardians that had governed Scotland during the interregnum. A further provocation came in a case brought by Macduff, son of Malcolm, Earl of Fife, in which Edward demanded that John appear in person before the English Parliament to answer the charges. This the Scottish king did. But the final straw was Edward's demand that the Scottish magnates provide military service in England's war against France. This was unacceptable. The Scots instead formed an alliance with France. The Comyn dominated council acting in the name of King John summoned the Scottish host to meet at Cadomley on the 11th of March. The Bruces and the Earls of Angus and March refused. And the Bruce family withdrew temporarily from Scotland, while the Cummins seized their estates in Annandale and Carrick granting them to John Comyn, Earl of Buchan. Edward I thereupon provided a safe refuge for the Bruces, having appointed the Lord of Annandale to the command of Carlisle Castle in October 1295. At some point in early 1296, Robert married his first wife, Isabella of Mar, the daughter of Don Orly, Earl of Mar, and his wife Helen. Beginning of the Wars of Independence, Almost the first blow in the war between Scotland and England was a direct attack on the Bruces. On the 26th of March 1296, Easter Monday, seven Scottish earls made a surprise attack on the walled city of Carlisle, which was not so much an attack against England as the Comyn Earl of Buchan and their faction attacking their Bruce enemies. Both his father and grandfather were at one time governors of the castle, 
and following the loss of Annandale to Kerman in 1295, it was their principal residence. Robert Bruce would have gained first-hand knowledge of the city's defences. The next time Carlisle was besieged, in 1315, Robert the Bruce would be leading the attack. Edward I responded to King John's alliance with France and the attack on Carlisle by invading Scotland at the end of March 1296, and taking the town of Berwick in a particularly bloody attack upon the flimsy Palisades. At the Battle of Dunbar, Scottish resistance was effectively crushed. Edward deposed King John, placed him in the Tower of London, and installed Englishmen to govern the country. The campaign had been very successful, but the English triumph would only be temporary. Although the Bruces were by now back in possession of Annandale and Carrick, in August 1296 Robert Bruce, Lord of Annandale, and his son, Robert Bruce, Earl of Carrick and future King, were among the more than 1,500 Scots at Berwick who swore an oath of fealty to King Edward I of England. When the Scottish revolt against Edward I broke out in July 1297, James Stuart, 5th High Steward of Scotland, led into rebellion a group of disaffected Scots, including Robert Wishart, Bishop of Glasgow, Macduff, the son of the Earl of Fife, and the young Robert Bruce. The future king was now 22, and in joining the rebels he seems to have been acting independently of his father, who took no part in the rebellion, and appears to have abandoned Annandale once more for the safety of Carlisle. It appears that Robert Bruce had fallen under the influence of his grandfather's friends, Wishart and Stuart, who had inspired him to resistance. With the outbreak of the revolt, Robert left Carlisle and made his way to Annandale, where he called together the knights of his ancestral lands and, according to the English chronicler Walter of Gisborough, addressed them thus, No man holds his own flesh and blood in hatred and I am no exception. I must join my own people and the nation in which I was born. I ask that you please come with me and you will be my counsellors and close comrades. Urgent letters were sent ordering Bruce to support Edward's commander, John de Warren, 6th Earl of Surrey, in the summer of 1297. But instead of complying, Bruce continued to support the revolt against Edward I. That Bruce was in the forefront of fermenting rebellion is shown in a letter written to Edward by Hugh Cressingham on 23 July 1292, which reports the opinion that, if you had the Earl of Carrick, the steward of Scotland and his brother Dot you would think your business done. On the 7th of July, Bruce and his friends made terms with Edward by a treaty called the Capitulation of Irvine. The Scottish lords were not to serve beyond the sea against their will, and were pardoned for their recent violence in return for swearing allegiance to King Edward, the Bishop of Glasgow, James the Steward and Sir Alexander Lindsay became sureties for Bruce until he delivered his infant daughter Marjorie as a hostage, which he never did. When King Edward returned to England after his victory at the Battle of Falkirk, the Bruce's possessions were accepted from the lordships and lands that Edward assigned to his followers. The reason for this is uncertain, though Forden records Robert fighting for Edward, at Falkirk, under the command of Anthony Beck, Bishop of Durham, Annandale, and Carrick. This participation is contested as no Bruce appears on the Falkirk role of nobles present in the English army, and two 19th-century antiquarians, Alexander Morrison and George Chalmers have stated Bruce did not participate and in the following month decided to lay waste Annandale and burn Air Castle, to prevent it being garrisoned by the English. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries Would you like to know more?